Welcome to the Hoopsville Coaches Corner presented by Buffalo Wild Wings at the third annual Hoopsville National Invitational Classic hosted by Stevenson University. Dave McHugh joined by Nate Davis from Randolph-Macon and Coach, welcome back to the Hoopsville National Invitational Classic. It's good to be here once again. It's going a little better so far. Hopefully yeah. we can uh, play better today and be even, even happier with ourselves. We are talking to Coach right before his Wittenberg game. They obviously won their first game uh, in overtime against a maybe tougher than expected Mary Harden Baylor team. Not that they're not always tough. But I don't think a lot of people thought that one would be an overtime type game. I'm pretty sure you guys weren't really expecting that. Well, there was a stretch there where I felt like we were in pretty good shape and we threw the ball away a bunch and missed some shots and did a really poor job rebounding the ball and gave them second shots and allowed them to get back in the game. And they're a tough team. They're talented. Um, they're well coached and they took advantage of the opportunities. Fortunately, we were able to get an overtime and make enough plays down the stretch to win, to, to hold on. It was certainly a good game to start. You know, I think it was the second game of the, of the event. You'll finish up here the Saturday night side of things. How important, I mean, you, you and I have talked, you came to the first uh, tournament. Uh, we didn't have you guys last year, but I think every year you're sitting there going, hey, can I come back? How important and why is that important to you? Well, I think it's important to play good people. Um, our league, obviously, with the Ultimate Athletic Conference is very challenging. And I make it a point every year we want to go in and make sure that the best team in our league is not the best team we're going to play all year long. So to do that with, uh, with the Virginia Wesleyans and Hampton Sydneys and Guilfords and those people around, you got to go out and play some people. And you know that we're going to get get a great opportunity up here with, with good teams. The tournament's extremely well run. Um, it's a good experience for our guys. It's not too far from home. It's two and a half hours for us to drive yeah. up, so it makes perfect sense for us to get Depending up Depending on traffic. Possible. Depending on traffic. Absolutely, depending <laughs> on traffic. <laughs> you have to drive around both DCs. That's true. And Baltimore <laughs> Beltways, which on Friday was certainly a little bit more challenging than usual. Um, so, I mean, the conference is challenging. I mean, and last year you guys end the season, let's just you know, to be blunt with a thud. No you know, losing in the conference tournament earlier than mm -hmm. you expected to. Uh, and then losing at home in the first round of the NCAA tournament. I know you were frustrated. What's and, and I think a lot of people were frustrated outside of you guys. I think a lot of people thought you guys were, had a chance to do something. What about this year? You're, you, how much do you take from last year's unfortunate finish and use it towards this year? Or is it literally wipe the slate clean and let's get going? It's not entirely wipe the slate clean, but I, there's only so much you can take. It's a new team. Um, we lost Andre Simon and Jamie Robinson were obviously very right. good players for us. Um, so the dynamic's different. We've got new blood coming in. Um, we've got an older groups so that have been around a little longer. So it's great that they've been through a lot, but still it's a new team. We're still trying to find our way and figure out rotations and what's the best way to, to use certain guys. So it's it's a motivation and the fact that we want to make sure that we continue to get better. I thought there was a stretch last year. We got in the middle of January where we were playing as well as anybody yeah, could find. Absolutely. Um, we were sharing the ball. We were really defending. We were making shots. We were scoring in a very efficient way and getting, doing a great job of stopping. And we kind of plateaued there for any of a number of reasons. I don't think that I thought I spent a little bit too much time worrying about who our next game was as opposed to making sure we were continuing to improve on things we needed to improve on. Um, but we started to Well, I mean, looking back, yeah, well, you can't say I'm no. Just saying, I mean, I mean <laughs> does it feel like you, that? You can't, I, I, we, were, we clearly weren't playing our best at the end of the year. The last couple weeks of the year, we had kind of flattened out a little bit and weren't playing particularly well. Yeah. We weren't playing poorly, but we weren't no. playing as well as, as we had been early. So you, you can't look back and say we certainly were playing better at the end of the year. So we, have, we must have peaked a little bit too early, but. That's the way it goes. We didn't do a good enough job of, of making sure we kept getting better. And there in the last couple of weeks, we, we paid the price for it. Conference coaches think you're the best in the conference this year. Um, Preseason number 11, D3Hoops.com. Um, a lot of high expectations despite what you lost. Worthy of those expectations? Or do you kind of look at that and go, ah? Well, I think that when you look at what we have back, we've got a lot of really good players back. Yeah. Um, I look back, and this is my sixth year now, and we return, we had that group back from the Final Four team yeah. to return that whole group. We had a great senior year. I, I don't see any reason why this guy, these guys can't be as good as, as those, but there's a lot of work that's got to be done before you get there. It's great to get recognition. It's great for recruiting balance. They were 11th in the country and we're picked to win our, win our league, but we know that we're going to get everyone's best shot. Um, people are going to come ready to play us. We've got to be ready to go every night, and then we got to continue to, to, to keep getting better while hopefully winning games along the way. And unfortunately, our schedule is such that if we don't play well, it's going to be exposed. Now, the other side of it is one of the great things about playing a great schedule is every time we finish a game, we know exactly what we need to work on. We know exactly what's been exposed. There's nothing that we're hiding. There's nothing that a main shot here or there is covering up for. We're going to be able to see it clearly, and hopefully as we go on here, we'll continue to get better and better. You talk right. about that schedule. You always go out there and schedule. I, I joke with your athletics director, there's times he wants to rein you in a little bit. You go out there and try and schedule the best you can. Certainly that helps you going into conference play, but what, what's the other mentality? I've mentioned already, really a lot of it is not wanting to play, having the, the top team in our league be the best team we can play. 
Um, we've had a lot, we've been fortunate with our program over the years. We've had a lot of success, so it's hard to play people that aren't pretty good. Like they won't, yeah. they won't have an interest in playing us. So we're gonna have to play some good people. Um, we're gonna play the Mary Washes. We're gonna play um, Christopher Newport. We're gonna play in, in your in your tournament here. We're gonna play Cabrini um, every year. They're they're not too far away. They're they're good. They all need games, right. and so it's it's an opportunity. Now we recruit from a wide area too. We have kids that are from Charlotte, North Carolina, to New York City, so we want to get them back to closer to home as much as possible. And to do those things, you have to go on the road and play some some tough sure. people. Conference, I, I mean, it, I was talking to Divek the other day, and just going through the conference, it's amazing how deep it is, even if the records don't seem to indicate it. You guys on top, Virginia Wesleyan is always in the equation. Dave Macedo always has a team, whether you think he does or doesn't. Right. Um, you know, Divek's got a, a team at Hamden Sydney that could, that could surprise. Uh, you've had Lynchburg in, the, in play recently. Mm -hmm. Shenandoah seems to be building. Paige Moyer's got a squad mm -hmm. at Roanoke that seems it's going to be pretty darn good. Guilford, you can never count out. Eastern Mennonites playing well. I mean, I'm already down to, oh, I yeah. think, <laughs> eight here already, and I'm not even done with right. Emory and Henry could sneak up on somebody. Uh, Shenandoah has, has become at least a factor. Mm -hmm. Certainly you don't play a double round robin. You guys play an offset schedule in some cases. But just how tough is, is it to play night in and night out in this well, conference? Well, I think you hit on the, the biggest thing. I'm not going to sit here and tell you we have the best conference in the country. I think it's right up there with anybody else. It's top and five, it's, definitely. And it's, it's not as much the teams at the top. I think you go across the country and they're very balanced. The, where you get with us is when you start to get down to, we have 12 teams, you start to get down to 9, 10, 11, 12. I think a great example is you look at last year, Williams losing the national championship to the buzzer. They beat Wood, they beat Washington League, finishes 11th in the league at the buzzer. Yeah. They beat Hampton Sydney, who finishes 8th in the league at the buzzer. Right. Um, so that's the kind of competition you face night in and night in. Now it prepares you for when you play sure. a good team because you've, you've got to develop a mentality that you're going to be ready to go every night because in our league, if you're not ready to go and you're on the road, you're in a lot of trouble. Sure. And you're in a pretty decent amount of trouble even at home if you're not ready to go against everybody in the league and they're going to, they're going to get you. So it, it, it puts a good mentality in your guys' mind. I think it helps keep some egos in check and they, they start to learn that maybe they're not quite as good as, as they think they are. And they got to go out there and perform every night to have a chance. And I think preseason coaches' polls are tough you know, in conferences. I almost take the ODAX usually every year and throw it out because I realize <laughs> anything is freaking right. possible on any particular night. Um, you had the big game to start off with Mary Harden Baylor. How important was that game? I know when I looked at the schedule with Gary Stewart, we saw that and went, you don't get this chance. As much as it's a South Region game, you don't get a chance for an East Side top team and a West Side top team to go against each other. From your vantage point, how important was that game? Well, I think, I mean, it's early. Not, not necessarily yeah, win-loss. I just mean important. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's every game is important. Sure. It's the way the selection is. I mean, everyone wants to make the answer. Everyone wants to win. you yeah. got to win games. I mean, it's hard. You're going to have to win 21 or 22 games out of the 25 or 26 you're guaranteed to play to, right. to really have a chance um, to get in the tournament. So it's hard. you got to win games. Um, and so that respect, getting a win against a quality opponent is always, always good. Um, we were fortunate, like I said, I thought we played pretty well at times, but not near the way we're capable of. I don't think we've reached anywhere near what we're capable of yet, and we take it for what it is. Um, we've found a way to win. Um, it's good in that it's a school in our in our region, and so when they're looking at it, maybe hopefully we get to the point where it matters, and you can say, <laughs> sure. we'll go back. But the reality is the two teams today are going to be a lot different yeah. when you get to February. Oh, that's, absolutely. That's where you have yeah. the... That's where the hard part is, but it's great to be able to get the teams from Texas and the teams from Virginia to play against each other. I know Guilford was down today and lost to Emory at the bottom, yeah. or with a couple seconds, couple of seconds left, they lost the game. So that's a good against the other against gauge. the you know, the UAA yeah. school, which are more of the spread out regions yeah. of the of the country. So in that respect, it's good. And of course, so you play the games are. Right. I don't know what's really helping anyone <laughs> anyone settle anything. Of course, you're, you yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> Of course, you're playing Wittenberg. We're talking before that game, um, a, a chance to play a Great Le or Great Lakes region team, a team that you maybe a different variety than what you would normally see in the ODAC as well. Yeah, I, think I actually use this analogy with our guys when we uh, when we were meeting earlier today to kind of talk about them. And last night is that they remind me a little bit of the last time we were here. We were really young, mm -hmm. um, we're talented, we're playing right there with everybody, and just not quite able to get over the hump. And where it ended up going at the end, we got to make sure that we come out and play really well today, so that. We aren't the one that starts to get them over the hump. <laughs> yeah, sure. You don't want them to use you as a yeah, catalyst. <laughs> they're, they're obviously they're very well coached. They're yeah. disciplined. They're physical. It's going to be a challenge for us. We're going to have to go out and play very well today to have a chance to win. Well, I certainly appreciate you coming to the Hoopsville National Invitational Classic once again. We love having you here. Uh, again, they'll take on Wittenberg after we have this interview. This interview will get posted, though, probably after the game. So not really relevant to this. But as always, we give the coach the final word. Any final thoughts you want to share with those who are tuning in? Well, I'd just like to say for everyone out there, this is a great event. I'd recommend anyone come up that has the opportunity to come see it. There's quality Division Three basketball being played across the country. You can see a bunch of good teams here, well-coached teams here in a, in a great environment, and it's, it's done the right way. Well, and we will make sure they go up against you, too, just in oh, case. Okay. <laughs>
Outstanding. He is Nate Davis from Randolph-Macon here in the Hoopsville Coach's Corner, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings.